Now, uh, this is lent in with another famous Michael. In 1964, on the film set of, of The Ipcrest File. Now, the story behind it is that there's a famous scene from The Ipcrest File where um, Michael Caine's in the books, he's not named, he's anonymous, but in the film they call him, because they have to call him something, it's Harry Palmer. And this is the anti-bombed bit, because this guy doesn't go to fancy restaurants, and he chats up a woman, he doesn't lay claim to, the, to the, the women, he actually chats them up and takes them out to his flat and shows them how to make an omelette. And the trick was, of course, to do, which was incredibly, um, I'm not, the word's not risky, but really, <laughs> Unusual in those days was to crack eggs with one hand. Yeah. Uh, and then that uh, really impresses the girls. Uh, and I, I swear that um, Len's cookbooks, which saw me through university, had the same thing. Uh, <laughs> but when they came to doing the film, Kane couldn't do it. He just, he just cracked. He just, he cracked literally. Uh, he couldn't actually handle doing the one, the one-handed cracks. And so they had to. Close up, it's actually Len Dayton's hands. <laughs> <laughs> or, or hand, I should say. Anyhow, uh, Len Dayton's uh, Ipcrestoir and then the immediate follow up, Salt Underwater and Funeral in Berlin, huge successes. Uh, and this was the antidote to Bond. This was um, somebody who broke the mould of, of spy fiction when it probably really needed breaking, mm -hmm. actually. Um, it was cool, it was hip, it became almost defined as being in the 60s. And then they went on to write other stuff, as well as other well spy stuff. Um, but you had an unnamed working class of a very important time, streetwise hero, ducking and diving through increasingly labyrinthine flops, if you want to sum it up. But the gangs still work to this day. Uh, I've stolen many of them. And um, uh, and I just think they're wonderful. I think the Ipcrest file is probably the crime book I've read more than any other. The Ipcrest file was kind of seismic. And yeah. the certain books in our youth, the Ipcrest file was on the spy came over the cold, which you might just get to the other. Yeah. You'd not really read, you'd read something like it before, because the dialogue is, is it's not Chandler. Chandler. It's, it's Chandler, Chandler, yeah. But written from a, a working class point of view. That's, those are the only books that I have, the first five books in first edition hardbacks. Ah. The only valuable books I owned are those five. But he also wrote the screenplay for Oh What a Lovely War, didn't he? I agree. Right. Yeah. Uh, he had his name taken off. Oh really? He had, he had a bit of a form, yeah. He produced a film from one of his own books, Only When I Laugh. Mm. Yes. He produced that first, and then he went on to Oh, oh okay. And the great rivalry was that Richard Attenborough was directing for the first time, and then was producing for the second. So, as you know him well, so as someone who's seen Le Carre never really fall from favour, which he has to degree, how does he take that? I, I you mean, yeah. Le Carre yeah, yeah. falling from yeah, favour, yeah, yeah. which Le Carre never has. Yeah, I mean, well, he's, I mean, he hasn't done anything wrong. He just would slip from memory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's quite happy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's very relaxed about it. He still likes telling stories about the old days. Um, he didn't mention the cat very much, must have been. But you were about to. Oh, yes. Yeah, what a crude segue. Crude segue. What a segue. segue. John the Carry, okay, well, where do you start? Uh, I, everything I seem to say it talks about uh, would be. The oh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be quick now. Le Carre, literary, brings the, the values of Joseph Conrad and writers of that generation into the. into The, the Spy That Came In From The Cold is the best espionage novel ever written. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad to hear people agree with me. And it's better than later Le Carre books. Wonderful, though, Jacob Taylor, Silver yeah. Spy, and things I'm like that. Perfect Spy. Yeah, that's my favourite. I, I, I would go for that one. Uh, he said the following quickly about Eaton. When he was Eaton, he said that his fellow students at Eaton were so fortified against the outside world, they have no contact with the people they were meant to govern. He said that in his days of Eaton. I'll let that rest for a second. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have got, Move, moving on. Yeah, we've got 10 minutes, haven't we? Uh, sorry. My yeah, we've got 10 minutes, so... No, you haven't got 10 minutes. No, we haven't. <laughs> oh, yes, we have. <laughs> oh, no. It says 14.30 on my thing here. <laughs> yeah. It's 14.30. Okay, well, talk to you all. <laughs> but we do need to speed up, though. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so let's move on. All right, we'll move on quickly. No, right, this is me, isn't it? This is Adam Hall. It is. Well, it's not. It's uh, not. It's Alison Trevor. Yeah. Well, actually, it's not. Because his name was Trevor Dudley Smith, and he wrote under at least ten pseudonyms, 
uh, starting during the Second World War. So he'd actually been going for 20 years before we get to this period. Um, and he, one of the pen names he used was, was Alistair Trevor. And he used it quite a bit, and he liked it a lot. And so he had his name legally changed to Alison Trevor. Uh, and then he got bored with that, so he adopted another name, Adam Hall, for uh, a series of spy novels. The Quiller Memorandum. Uh, which was, uh, the book was originally called the Berlin Memorandum, but it was also immediately filmed as Quiller Memorandum. And that set off a, a whole series that went, ran until 1995, uh, I think. Uh, there were 19. Quiller novels and was a short lived TV series. Um, oh, you didn't run for very long. Um, but um, uh, there weren't any further film ad adaptations. It, it, was, it wasn't a bad film, actually, was it? it, wasn't it? Was a bad film. The, problem, the problem is the casting is George Siegel. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, having said that, it's written by Harold Pinter mm -hmm. and it has Alec Guinness in it. It's the supporting cast you have to look at in that movie. Max von Sydow. Max von is the yeah. villain. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, no, no, unless nobody, um, does anybody ever really know Quiller or is it a yeah. total name? I'm totally yeah. new. Um, this was, again, a bit of an antidote to Bond. This was non-smoking, non-drinking, totally lone wolf. I mean, Bond had the odd like, quarrel with people like that in Jamaica, so then Felix Leiter. Quilla had no I mean, he insisted on working alone. And um, he was super tough, karate black belt. He worked for something called the Bureau, which is a shady bit of MI6, and he had a numerical rating, which was nine which meant he, he could stand any amount of torture. <laughs> and this is a guy who knew, went into the, he knew which nerves he had to, you know, exactly, I mean exactly which nerves he had to operate in order to clench his hand. He was that sort of defined and so on. Uh, it's a bit like, it's a puritanical James Bond, but the books did move at a great pace, and exotic locations again, that's a theme, uh, and, uh, I think there are Quiller traits that you can see in the J Jason Bourne movies to mm. today. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, that kind of knowledge base. And, and it's all, almost brainwashed. And it's also always on the go. Yeah. There aren't the briefings. He's already on the run at yeah. the start of the, the, the... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Okay, and then right. you, Barry. Uh, I'm Barry. Barry. This one is Gavin Lyle. Gavin Lyle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, my contact with him is a once-year meal with uh, at which Catherine Whitehorn is present. Anybody know the connection? Do you know who Catherine Whitehorn is? <laughs> Somebody does, yes. Yeah. Uh, one of our great journalists. And then they get on the train straight away? They do, yes. Yeah, it's yeah. strange. I get it. How does it happen? So she, she's his widow. Uh, so Gavin Lyle was a, a national service again, Cold War. His heroes are always cynical RAF types. His heroes no guns. His sons no, his heroes no planes. And, uh, he also wrote superior women characters, which, as Mike said, there are no women rights here. Though we can mention Helen McInnes yeah. from yeah. this era, can we not? Well, she was, uh, yeah. she was, her fame was earlier. Yes, her fame was earlier. The dialogue is influenced by Hamilton Chandler, and then he later wrote a spy series called with Major Maxim, which I don't like as much. Mm. But I love these earlier books.